All right, guys, we're officially into the month of July, which means training camp is going to be here soon. Who's excited for some Bears football? I know I am. If you are as well, hit that like button. Let's get 500, hell, 1,000 likes on today's show. Smash that like button if you're excited for some Bears football. Chicago Bears Now is presented by Roan. Go check out their awesome clothing products, including their summer polos at roan.com slash chatsports. Get 20% off with promo code chatsports. That link will be in the comments and in the description of this video. My name is Harrison Graham, and on today's show, I kind of want to just talk about all the Chase Claypool rumors and madness, to be honest. Um, I'm kind of over all the slander at this point, and I get it hasn't been the greatest start for Claypool in Chicago, but the chatter around him over the last few weeks, days, and even months at this point is all over the place, and I'm kind of just over it, so I want to address it and just get my thoughts out there, and curious what the audience thinks as well, so be commenting throughout the show, but let's get you caught up on some of the latest just, I'll call it slander when it comes to Chase Claypool. Christopher Knox, our good pal over at Bleacher Report, they did an article of surprise cuts. Cuts? Like, Chase Claypool could get cut out of control, right? He said if Claypool hadn't cost so much being traded for a second-round pick, obviously, there's a good chance he'd already be off the team. He barely impacted the Bears' offense last season, catching only 14 passes for 140 yards and zero touchdowns in seven games. Chicago is already out the draft pick it paid for Claypool, but it could save $3 million by releasing him. Yeah, let's, let's get that $3 mil, Knox. If the 24-year-old can't show that he's grasping Luke Getze's offense and is willing uh, to, to work hard to contribute, the Bears should cut their losses and cut him. This is absolutely insane. Even if you're in the camp that you don't think Claypool's good, that you think the trade is a, a lost cause, like – Three million bucks is not worth moving on from a guy that's actually produced in this league. Like, that is ridiculous. He's a free agent after this year. If it doesn't work out, you could just let him go. Like, cutting him now is preposterous. Like, it is ridiculous. Uh, in insert Stephen A. Smith analogies and uh, uh, word uh, diction here because it just makes no sense. They just traded a second-round pick for a midseason. They're not cutting him. Uh, there's no logic to doing that whatsoever. Now, we're going to get into some more quotes here uh, around the slander uh, around Chase Claypool. And look, let me just say this too. Like, I am acknowledging that it has not been the best start, but Cutting him? Wow. That is, uh, that's a new one when it comes to that. These are some ones that have kind of gone out the last few weeks. Uh, we talked about this one. Mark Silverman of Sylvie, Waddle and Sylvie says that I've heard from a few people inside the building that he's not someone who's very self-motivated. There's a long way to go. And it's like, okay, look, if he's hearing that, that's fine. Bar Bill Barnwell of ESPN recently, we did a video uh, of him talking about the uh, NFL uh, skill position rankings. We talked about the Bears, obviously. And uh, after talking about DJ Moore and Darnell Mooney, he said there's a major drop-off between the top two and everyone else at receiver. Chase Claypool caught just 14 passes after joining Chicago at the trade deadline. Cole Komet's uh, touchdown total spiked last season, seven from zero in 2021, but I doubt he'll keep scoring once every seven or so receptions. The Komet one's not really relevant here. Uh, Joe Dolan, Sirius XM Radio, does some fantasy football stuff too. He says, that trade was a disaster. The day the, day the Bears made it, there's no reason to be interested in him for fantasy football. Well, I won't speak to the fantasy side of it, but here's the reality. Yes, so far, the Chase Claypool trade hasn't been a win for Chicago, but it's half a season worth. This offense is tough to learn on the fly. Coaches acknowledge that. It was very unlikely that Claypool midseason last year, for a bad team, by the way, was going to come in and make a major impact right away. Now, could it have been better than it was? Probably should it have been better? Yeah, like, I acknowledge that. I've said, like, this has not been great early on for Chase Claypool, but the reality is that trade was for this year more than it was for last year. Let's see how it goes here in 2023. And then Chase Claypool's getting destroyed online. Oh, he's he's wearing weird clothes and modeling in France, yada, 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 which, by the way, that international trip he was spreading, uh, he was doing, um, he was representing the NFL and the Bears uh, on an international NFL uh, trip deal where they're uh, hanging out with kids and doing camps and stuff like that as well. No one wants to talk about that, though. It's like, guys, between minicamp and training camp, you have six weeks off. Who cares if Chase Claypool spends a 
four or five days in France and does a modeling thing on the side in the deadest part of the year for this. Why do people care uh, about Chase Claypool going on a modeling trip? They're saying, well, he's not working hard. I mean, he, he's, he's, going to, uh, he's going to France. I look at him. He doesn't care. That makes no sense whatsoever. I have a lot more thoughts and why you guys should give Chase Claypool a chance here in 2023. But first, let's talk about Roan. I think Chase Claypool uh, could rock some Roan gear uh, and look pretty good doing it. Rocking one of their polos right now. Their goal was to reinvent the male's closet, and they have absolutely done that with their most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products, no demand. It's called the Commuter Collection. Uh, the Commuter Collection gets you ready for any occasion, whether you're going to work, whether you're going uh, to the golf course, happy hour, whatever the case may be. Their quarter zips, polos, dress shirts, and comfortable pants will have you ready for that occasion. Mobility is important if you're traveling a lot, if you're moving around for work. You want to be comfortable while also looking good. Roan provides that with their comfortable four-way stretch fabric, gives you that breathability as well. Uh, also, what's awesome about Roan, machine washable. You can throw their uh, shirts, their pants in the washing machine. Then you just air dry them. They're good to go. Save money uh, and don't go to the dry cleaners anymore with Roan. Get 20% off at roan.com slash chatsports code chat sports that link is in the comments and in the description upgrade your wardrobe today with roan okay here's why we should give chase claypool a chance while acknowledging it hasn't been a great start but some of the chatter out there i think is a bit over the top like cutting him <laughs> bleacher report you're on the hot seat after that one uh okay number one here he's actually proven in this league believe it or not no one wants to acknowledge that he's been good in the nfl for more than just eight to 10 games like he had in Chicago last year. His first two years with the Pittsburgh Steelers, he was legitimately really, really good. He had 873 yards and nine touchdowns as a rookie. Yeah, the touchdowns went down in year two, but remember, that was Big Ben's last year, noodle arm Big Ben. He could barely throw the ball downfield. Still had 860 yards on 59 catches for two touchdowns. His first two years, he averaged 865 and five, touch, five and a half touchdowns. Those are number two wide receiver numbers in this league. Like, he performed like a legit number two his first two years. And then you know what happened last year? Pittsburgh tried to play him exclusively in the slot, something he had never done before in the NFL. So that was an adjustment. It didn't work out so well. Then they traded him to Chicago. He's having to learn a whole new offense on a team that runs the ball more than it throws. Midseason, the Bears have injuries. They're, they're kind of tanking by the time he gets here. Like, it's just a mess. Uh, and we're just writing him off. Like, Let's pump the brakes. This is a player who's talented, has been good. Yes, there's some concerns. He's had some immaturity issues. I've, I've acknowledged all of that, uh, but uh, he's actually produced in this league. I don't think we should forget that uh, when it comes to Chase Claypool. Do you still believe in Chase Claypool? Look, I could say all that. Maybe the answer is D for don't. It's uh, Listen, democracy here. Type B for believe, D for don't. Give me your real thoughts down in the comment section. I still believe the talent is there. We've seen him produce. I'm not going to write him off just yet. Reason number two we should give Chase Claypool a chance. Justin Fields and coaches have spoke glowingly about him and have had his back all offseason long. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say yeah, that they're going to say, yeah, he sucks, but, like, they don't have to go out of their way and say these things either. Justin Fields there in OTA said Chase has improved tremendously from the end of last year to now. That's one thing I'm truly proud to say, seeing his work ethic, his attitude change. I think that's significant. You can see he's just taking another step, so definitely excited for that. Tyke Tolbert, wide receiver coach, said, I'm excited for where Chase is. He's more into what we're doing offensively. He asks a lot of good questions. He's here extra, too, when he doesn't have to be here. He's here doing a lot of extra things, trying to get better, watching tape on his own, that type of thing. He's a big target, as we know. People forget that he's 230 pounds, but he ran a 4-4-2 in the 40. He's really fast. He was out here, and he was getting behind the defense a few times. Now, obviously, he got nicked up, missed the last couple of weeks of OTAs in minicamp, but... He's been engaging. Teammates are speaking high on him. Coaches like what he's saying. Do you want to listen to bloggers just loosely throw stuff out there like Christopher Knox? I'm not going to throw Mark Silverman into that category. He's been around this team a lot. So like, hey, listen, if he's heard that from a source inside the building, so be it. But uh, outsiders, I don't think, should have more validity than what the team uh, and players on that team are saying about him. I, I think that should carry more weight, and for me it does at this point in time. One more reason coming up, but subscribe now if you want my authentic takes around the Chicago Bears. We're the channel for you, news, rumors, uh, 
just thoughts, takes about this team, and uh, training camp coverage, once that gets here, we're going to have you covered. Subscribe today. It's 100% free. Do not miss out. And then lastly, Claypool seems motivated uh, in what he's been saying recently uh, and how he's been operating. Like, I think he knows, like, hey, last year, like, that wasn't good enough. Like, I'm on a contract year. I want to perform for this team. This team traded for me. Here's what Claypool had to say uh, heading into the 2023 season. He says, I truly believe that this year from last year will be a night and day difference. I think fans will be loving it next year. I'm excited, obviously, with the additions we had in the offseason, but just being able to stack that knowledge from last season – all those learning, those growth spurts that we had to go through, I think it's going to be great. Offense is going to be explosive. Defense is going to be playmaker or going to have playmakers. I think we're going to be a fun team to watch, and I think we're not going to back down from anyone. And look, I think he knows what the conversation is. Uh, he was not productive. Uh, he was not uh, good uh, since coming over from the trade. Small sample size, uh, but. Uh, his third year in the NFL was clearly the worst out of the three. Uh, but here's the bottom line. We have all got to give Chase Claypool a chance in the 2023 NFL season. He deserves an opportunity to pr prove himself in Chicago. Again, he's been productive in this league, over 860 yards receiving in each of his first two seasons in Pittsburgh, including nine touchdowns as a rookie. All this chatter from outside noises, Bleach Report, they should cut Claypool. Uh, Mark Silverman, I'm hearing inside the building that they don't like him at all, that there's major questions there, even though Justin Fields and Tyke Tolbert and others have spoke glowingly around his work ethic. I will fully acknowledge Chase Claypool up to this point uh, has not lived up to expectations in Chicago. Very small sample size, though. Half a season in which he had to learn everything on the fly, and the Bears were kind of a mess last year. Give him a chance. If he stinks in 2023, I will be the first to admit it, but Chase Claypool is talented, and I think he's motivated to prove himself this upcoming season. So will it work out for Claypool in Chicago? Take a prediction for us. Type Y for yes, or you can type in for no. Truth is, I don't know. I hope it does, but I'm not ready to say that it's – not going to, like a lot of people out there are just writing this kid off. I think uh, he's got a chance to prove himself this year, and uh, I hope he takes advantage of the opportunity. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. My name is Harrison Graham. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Bears Now by Chat Sports. See you then.